G'day and welcome to the Half Stitch Diamond and Overlaid Tally with Jenny Brandis, which is worked here in the Topaz Mat from the Pattern Month number 6. The 6x6 six six pin diamond has a Bedfordshire styled overlaid tally added to the Half Stitch Diamond. This video shows how I work the central sample. The surround is worked as a simple wrinkled pin or spoked edge, which I have linked in the description below. We are going to start the half stitch diamond as usual and adding a tally or a leaf as an overlay without adding any extra pairs. Start the diamond with half stitch, pin half stitch. The right bobbin will be used as the weaver thread. Half stitch the incoming pair to the right, add the pin twist, and put up the pin. Half stitch back to and through the incoming pair on the left side. Add the pin twist and put up the pin. Continue in half stitch to the incoming pair on the right. Cross and twist and add the pin twist. Put up the pin and close it with cross twist. Lay both pairs to the side. You can now see that there is a pair on the left, two centre pairs and the two laid aside to the right. Put up your tallied pin between the two centre pairs and close the pin with cross stitch to start the tally. It is now that I realise I should have had a little more thread on the bobbins. This bobbin becomes my tally weaving thread. Shorten the length of the thread on the other three tally bobbins and lengthen it on the weaver one. This is usually done if you have a small hand, but I do it as it gives me more control of the threads. It also helps me keep track of which bobbin is the weaver one. Pin the other pairs well off to the side to keep them out of the way while we work the tally. I have lengthened the weaver thread until it is about half a bobbin length longer than the other three. Lift the weaver bobbin over and back under the left bobbin. Tension it until the thread is up against the pin. Over the middle one, under the right one, over, and under the middle one. Holding down the three base bobbins with my right hand, tension it up to the pin. I'm tensioning up to the left as I am left handed. You can of course tension to the right if you prefer. Continue with the same weave and tension for the entire tally. Under, over the middle one, under and over the right one, under and tension. My weaver just happens to be a dark wood. It is not intentional, but great for this demonstration. The two outside threads are essential to how the shape is formed. The centre thread, however, does not impact that. I want to have the widening at the top third straight down for the centre third and narrowing at the bottom third. Make the tally a row or two longer than the tally area. If you need to leave your work in the middle of the tally, don't panic. Simply lay the tally bobbin over the top of the other bobbins. That will hold the threads in place, allowing you to pick up where you left off later. Continue working the tally, adding a stabilising pin if you wish. I did. Close the tally with cloth stitch and lay it off to the side. Now it is time to work the rest of the diamond in half stitch down to the bottom tally pinhole. I 
I checked to see if the weaver thread was going over or under the tally pin and wrongly decided it should go under the pin. You can see in the photo the hole this causes. I separate the threads and bring down the tally centred over the half stitch. Tension the cloth stitch at the end of the tally and put up the pin between the second and third of the tally threads. The tally has a slight curve, so tension the threads until it lies flat. Go back to the half stitch weaver thread and work half stitch to the last pin in the diamond. The first three rows of half stitch locks the tally in place. I finish the sample off with a fringe of yellow threads by laying aside the closest pair after each outside pin. Finishing the bottom pin by taking the right bobbin from each pair and working a reef knot, then tie off the left bobbins. Thank you for watching this all the way through.